The IO Gear Upstream 4K featured in today's review is provided courtesy of IO Gear. Having done content creation and a number of commission video projects over the last eight years, I am always curious about new capture options as they come to market. Capture equipment contributes heavily to my overall workflow and enjoyment of the game that I am trying to capture. Do I have to sacrifice system features like resolution, HDR, or high frame rates? Do I have to do some weird audio configuration to get everything to work as I want? Will it play nice with my RetroTINK 5X? I am sure a number of you out there have also thought the same things. So when I was approached by IO Gear to test out their latest capture card, the Upstream 4K, I was curious as to how it would stack up against each of these questions. I like the box the Upstream 4K arrives in. The front showcases the capture card in a glossy sheen with device highlights on a nice backdrop. This is accented by a pleasing green color scheme that spans each side of the box. System requirements and a contents list are also found here. The rear side takes us back to the gray backdrop and includes a list of more key features of the Upstream 4K and a diagram for usage. Inside the box you will find your Upstream 4K, USB cable, HDMI cable, 3.5mm aux cable, quick start guide, and a warranty card. The Upstream 4K makes a nice first impression with its compact design at 1.7 inches long, 0.9 inches wide, and 0.66 inches high, it can fit seamlessly into any setup. Perfect for an external capture card. The typical HDMI in and out ports are here as expected, but unlike competing options with these specs and form factor, they are joined by a set of 3.5mm audio ports for passing through your controller's voice chat capabilities. The last physical features of the device are its USB-C connector for data and power, and a single LED to show the device is being powered. The Upstream 4K is held in place during use by two long rubber feet, and they are effective against all but the heaviest of HDMI cables. The device itself is extremely light, which can make it ideal for portable capture stations and convention use. The frame does have some slight give at its center, but otherwise it is extremely sturdy and should hold up to all normal wear and tear. Now, the Upstream 4K supports a number of input and output resolutions, and it is important to be aware of them before purchasing it. For anyone hoping to output 4K 120 or to record at 4K 60, this is not a device you will be interested in due to HDMI and USB bandwidth limitations. Recording at 4K is capped at 30Hz, but the pass-through will be in full 60 with HDR if your display supports it. HDR content is tone mapped back into SDR for recording and the results are great. Dropping down to the next supported resolution of 1440p sees options greatly expand. Recordings top out at 60Hz, but also support 50, 30, and 25Hz. Pass-through for 1440p supports up to 144Hz output, but unfortunately no 120Hz option is currently available. This is a shame, as this would have been perfect for high frame rate output on the Xbox Series X and S. 1080p sees recording top out at 120Hz, with pass-through capable of 240, 144, 120, 60, 50, 30, and 24Hz. Perfect for competitive gamers and current-gen console owners who don't mind taking a resolution hit for higher frames. 720p and 480p sources are also accepted, as long as they are at 60Hz. Getting the Upstream 4K set up and ready for use is as easy as plugging the provided USB cable into the device and PC or Mac, hooking your system of choice up to the HDMI in port, and an HDMI cable to your monitor from the out port. Then an OBS or other recording program set up a new capture device and select the Upstream 4K. From here there'll be a few manual things to tweak. By default the device will be capturing all sources connected to it at 1080p resolution. So you can manually set other resolutions to record like 1440p or 4K. I like to use 1440p for my recording with this type of card to keep 60Hz capabilities. Again, for 4K sources like the Xbox Series X, S, One X, PS5, or PS4 Pro, your output is still being sent to your display in full 4K and HDR if your display is capable, making it an ideal solution. The last thing to tweak is changing the card's audio recording settings so that you can actually record a system's audio. Now for the day-to-day -day use of the Upstream 4K in my workflow, I am happy to report it is handling everything within its capabilities perfectly. With my Series S set to 4K60, I get beautiful 1440p 60fps recordings which have been perfect for capturing my last few tutorials. Even scaling them to 4K with OBS results in a nice clean image. The RetroTINK 5X also works perfectly in its 1440p output mode, allowing for the full arsenal of my retro systems to be captured perfectly. 
But seeing as I no longer have my retro set up in the same room as my recording PC, I am actually running the Upstream 4K on a Steam Deck to achieve it. It makes me smile to see these devices work together so well, as it means once gaming conventions and behind the scenes events start back up, I will have a way to get beautiful footage from any demos. And the compact size of both devices make them perfect for such a use case. But in the meantime, I have been able to complete a number of commissioned trailers, personal projects, and tutorials with all needed video and audio being represented accurately. The pass-through on the Upstream 4K also introduced no noticeable latency to my eyes. Even the capture window in OBS is pretty quick on the uptake, but I would never recommend playing from a preview screen as there is always some latency in it. But you shouldn't have to worry about setting up any audio or video delays to sync up your mic or camera to the gameplay like the capture cards of yesteryear. Thank goodness those days are over, it sucked so hard back then. Now one of the features found on the Upstream 4K not seen on a number of competing devices was that headset pass-through port. Some games don't allow for voice chat to be sent over HDMI, making this a great way for creators to get chat restored to their recordings and streams. Systems like the PS4 also can't output audio to your headphones and the HDMI output at the same time, so this is a great alternative. It is seamless, so no complicated workarounds or extra devices are needed, which is a huge plus in my book. Just plug the controller in with the included 3.5mm cable, and then plug your headset into the other clearly marked port and you are ready to go. You can adjust the audio levels of the ports and HDMI on a PC or Mac with software found on IO Gear's website. I honestly have little to complain about with the Upstream 4K. The device does everything it says it's going to and does it well. Some might be saddened by the lack of full 4K60 recording capabilities, but again there is a limit to what USB 3.1 can achieve. If you need 4K60, this isn't an option for you to be considering. The lack of 1440p 120Hz pass-through is also a missed opportunity for Xbox Series owners, so I would love to see that patched in someday. But my one and only real usability nitpick comes down to having to change resolutions depending on the source. This is something you have to deal with in most external capture devices though, so it isn't really a fault of the upstream 4K. I have just been spoiled by my Avermedia Live Gamer 4K for years where setting the resolution of the card to 4K will instantly make everything scale to that resolution so you could just set it and leave it. I would love to be able to set the resolution on the upstream 4K to 1440p and forget about it but unfortunately 1080p and under sources don't play nice with such a setting. Oh well, manual settings it is! For anyone just getting started with content creation, or for those who are still using 1080p or lower cards, the IO Gear Upstream 4K is a cost-effective starting card or upgrade to take your recordings and streams to the next level. Regardless if you are on last gen, current gen, or using a dual PC setup, the Upstream is ready to capture it all with no compromises to your playing experience. With the ability to pass through high resolutions, HDR, and high frame rates, there is a lot to love. Best yet is that the Upstream 4K comes in at roughly half the price as a number of its competitors with the same feature sets. Based on my time with the Upstream 4K and a number of projects it has helped me finish, it is an easy recommendation for any creator looking for a simple capture solution. So that is the IO Gear Upstream 4K capture card. Just a wonderful little device, does absolutely everything it says it's going to do even passes through HDR and high frame rates, which is well, not something a lot of other external capture cards can say, but there are a few out there that do exist, but this definitely comes in as the cheapest, and I am just really impressed. I've had a good time with this card. I haven't really wished it would do anything differently. It does everything I need it to do for the particular use case that I am using it for. And as such, it has found a permanent home over in my retro uh, capture station that is being powered by the Steam Deck, of all things. But 1440p, 60 hertz, that's just perfect for that use case. And again, easy to recommend to any content creator that is looking to just get started or upgrade to a more higher resolution card on the cheap. So, thank you again to IO Gear for sending this one my way to check out. I kind of took a long time with this one because I just really wanted to see if it could accomplish my needs and sure enough it has and then thank you to all of you who have watched this review i hope you have found it informative interesting and uh gave you a reason to check out the uh, upstream 4k because again it is definitely worth checking out so 
Big shout out to each and every one of you again for watching this video through to its completion. I really do appreciate it. But I do have a couple more huge favors to ask you here now. If you haven't already, hit that like, dislike button depending on how much you liked this video. And that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new content comes live on the channel. Loads coming your way and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. And for anyone who is interested in further helping support the channel and keep it going, you can also check out that join button somewhere down here on YouTube or the Patreon link that's going to appear right here over my face or something. But little goes a long way to keep this place up and running and bringing all of this content to you. And just big shout out to all of our current champions. Y'all have been amazing. Thank you so much for believing what we do and keeping us going for so long. You're all amazing. But that's going to do it for this one. So until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome. Keep on gaming. Keep on streaming, and we'll see you back next video.